I'd love to dive into some definitions here because you mentioned narrow AI and AGI. Um, probably one of the reasons we're having you on today is because we've seen the explosion worldwide of this hot new narrow AI called, you know, chat GPT, right? So that's something that everyone is noticing. I guess the OGs in the industry have known this kind of tech has been out there maybe in other, you know, trillion dollar tech companies, but this is maybe the first time that the public has seen it. But you've yeah. always talked about AGI, which is this general intelligence. Maybe you can define AGI. And I know there's a few <clears throat> different definitions based on various scientists over the years, but if you had to define that, could you, and then maybe put that in perspective of human intelligence, because I love how you've always written that, you know, human intelligence, you know, we're not that smart. And so when you compare it to the things that we can't do, it's not always necessarily where we want to go. And I don't know if I'm getting that right, but maybe you can make some of those definitions. Yeah. What is meant by general intelligence, obviously, is, is intelligence that isn't restricted just to one small domain or, or, or problem, but, but can rather one system using a common set of structures and mechanisms, one system can can be intelligent in a wide variety of, of, of different areas. And more specifically, what you're looking for is a system that can generalize. So you train or program it to do certain things, and then it makes its own creative leap, and then it learns to do things that are radically different from what it was trained or, or, or programmed to do. And this, this ability to generalize, it's not going to be entirely reliable. Such systems are going to make mistakes and it will feel like, feel like magic sometimes. And this, this is what humans have obviously demonstrated, right? We've demonstrated it. As a, as a species, I mean, we evolved to run around in, in sa the savanna hunting and gathering, and we wound up creating robots and, and Facebook and sending people in, 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 into space. And we show it individually. I mean, you know, I taught myself to program computers. I taught myself to build 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 ele ele electronics. I, I and I wasn't program to do that it's not it's not wired into into my brain i didn't learn it in school either i sort of worked it out as, as i went along right and th this this capability that that humans have is very fundamental right and it comes out of the basic sort of self-organizing self-expanding nature of complex systems i mean for example biological systems i mean every every biological system that has its own sort of open-ended organic intelligence has two primary factors driving it one is what you'd call individuation it wants to maintain its own boundaries it wants to stay a whole system it wants to survive right the other is what you think of as self-transcendence it wants to expand it and grow beyond itself and em embrace new new horizons and become something new that may be even incomprehensible to the previous version of itself and this this combination of individuation and self-transcendence has driven evolution right that's how one-celled organisms became multi-celled organisms became people it's how hunter-gatherers became civilization and and now now modern post-industrial civilization and it's how each of us keeps breaking new boundaries in, in our in our own, own lives and narrow AIs that are trained just to do a particular task like you know play go or play chess or or, or drive a car or you know pack stuff in a box in in, in, a, in a factory or even solve algebra or calculus problems I mean these systems are they're doing amazing and useful stuff and they can seem very smart in the particular things they do, but they're not making a big creative leap beyond, beyond what they were trained and programmed to do. Now the, the trick with these systems like chat GPT and other similar systems that have been around a couple of years and not publicly launched, like 
Google Lambda, by most reports, is smarter than ChatGPT, but Google didn't want to release it publicly because it basically it spouts too much senseless BS, right? And Google felt that would not look good for their reputation to release a system like that. OpenAI made a different business call, partly because they're not defending a huge search business, right? But the, the trick with these systems is that the training data is just so much, right? So these systems are general in one sense, they cover a lot of different domain areas, right? I mean, chat GPT or Lambda can answer questions about anything. They can do some very simple soft software programming. They can answer some very simple mathematics. They can answer simple questions on medicine. They could write a job cover letter for you. So they, they are general in the sense that they cover a very wide variety of areas. On the other hand, they can do that because all those areas are in their training data, right? Because they read something very close to, to the whole web. So they're general in the sense that they cover a lot of things, but they don't have a fundamental ability to generalize. The reason they cover a lot of things is because they're trained on a lot of things, right? So, I mean, like a, a human civilization consisting only of chat GPTs would never advance. It would never progress because it's just like retreading combinations of, of what was, was fed into it. Now, they Part of the confusing thing is people do a lot of that, right? Like we do a lot of bloviating where we have no idea what we're talking about. A lot of art is derivative. A lot of what people say is just like what we heard someone else say, what we saw on TV, right? So so a lot of what humans do is just kind of shallowly recombining stuff that was fed into us in kind of the same way that the chat GPT system does. So Jim Rickards has just recorded a video that's not available to anyone in the public and he's gonna be talking about how this upcoming recession is gonna be fast, it's gonna be bloody, it's gonna be nasty. But at the same time, he's gonna show you how you can position yourself to profit from all of this chaos. Now we've made this video only available to our viewers. Go to LondonReal.tv forward slash Jim, watch that immediately. I can't say enough good things about Jim Rickards. He understands the global economic system better than any guest I've ever had on London Real. His predictions are almost uncannily true, and you can learn how to profit from his vision, from his expertise, and his understanding of economics. So go to LondonReal.tv forward slash Jim or click the link below. It's an excellent, excellent look on what's gonna happen in the future and how you can position yourself to profit from that. Jim is one of the best in the business, one of my favorite guests on London Real, and he's very, very good at predicting the future and showing us all to profit from it. So click the link and I hope you enjoy. Hey, do you wanna profit from crypto? Then join my DeFi Academy. The Crypto DeFi Academy will help you create generational wealth. But don't take my word for it, listen to my students. When I first got into crypto, I remember thinking to myself, I need to learn more. Brian Rose, learning crypto, learning DeFi, gotta do it. I am so grateful that I jumped in and did this. I had to break through some limiting beliefs that I can do this, that I can afford this, that I can be in this. It challenges um, the things that are deeply rooted within us. Joining DeFi Academy has been one of the best decisions I have made on my blockchain journey. This course was a life changer, a game changer, a huge eye opener, coming from knowing practically nothing at the speed of the learning over the over four weeks was just fantastic. The information you provided in this class was invaluable. I feel far more confident in my next steps. We took complex concepts and made them easier to understand. What's different than so many other ones is it just doesn't tell you what to do. It uh, actually makes you do it. This is for people who are serious about becoming traders. This is the way it should be done. I realized from this learning experience again that it is not about what you learn, but about who you learn it from. The energy was insane. I've, I've never experienced such incredible energy on a live call. Brian Rose, you, you are a legend, my friend. It's the only thing in the market where you can get all information and learn everything what you need to know. Everything is so clear and so well done. And I am um, just forever grateful for this program. It made me feel so much more confident about crypto than I did before. I did not anticipate how passionate I was going to become about it. It's also been like a big learning experience for me. 
not just in the crypto space, but just uh, in overall uh, balance of life. What I've learned is, you know, how to take ownership, you know, of my life in a way that um, I really, I really hadn't before. Yeah, you can't put a price on that, really. I would recommend it to anybody, top notch. Excellence does not come cheap. You know, so if you want excellence, you gotta pay for it, but it's so worth it. Pull the trigger. That's what this course is about. You're not gonna regret it, really. It's amazing. Thank you, Brian and team. So what are you waiting for? Crypto is happening now. Click the link below, submit your application, and let me mentor you on how to create generational wealth and build the decentralized financial infrastructure of the future.